Guys, I hate to say it, but I gained a little bit of weight. 6.7 pounds to be exact. Let's get started. Hey guys, Sam Rhino here with another video. Uh, as a lot of you might know that follow me, that I picked up the 600 F4 uh, about a month ago, and a lot of you asked me to make a comparison video uh, between this lens and the 200 to 600. Now, obviously, this lens is gonna is gonna be better than the 200 to 600. It's eleven thousand dollars more. I think what people want to know, and I wanted to know the same thing before I bought this lens. Is it worth an extra $11,000 more than the 200 to 600? It's not so much that it's better, but is it really worth the price difference to upgrade? Or if, you know, there's a lot of people also that are looking uh, to buy either the 200 to 600 or the 600 F4, and they wanna know, should they go all out and spend this kind of money, or is the 200 to 600 gonna be good enough for them? So we're gonna take a look in this video. I'm gonna give you the reasons why it was worth that extra money for me personally, and you can make your decision from there. I'm also gonna give you some of the challenges that you're gonna have of shooting this lens over the 200 to 600. Uh, but before we get those things started, I just wanna thank Unique Photo for hooking me up with this lens right away. Uh, when I finally decided that I'm gonna uh, order this lens and, and buy it, on <clears throat> my way down to the store to order it, I called up Sony Pro Support because I know these lenses are like almost impossible to find. Uh, and I tried to get one expedited. Uh, and what they told me was uh, they really don't have these lenses sitting around anywhere. Uh, they're pretty much built to order. And the way it works, it, it takes about a month for them to build them, uh, believe it or not, to build one of these in their factory in Japan. Then, of course, they have to ship it here. So you're looking at at least two months, you know, uh, minimum uh, most times before you can get your hands on one of these when you order it. Um, but, uh, you know, I went there, you know, kind of like, okay, I'll place the order and wait. <clears throat> and they had one and they hooked me up uh, with one. I walked out the same day with this lens. I was static and I want to thank them at Unique Photo. They always take good care of me. They're not paying me. They're not sponsoring me. Uh, I'm just thanking them for doing that. Um, the second thing is I didn't buy this lens because I was dissatisfied with the 200 to 600. I think the 200 to 600 is a fantastic lens. It served me really well from day one. I had that lens since day one. <clears throat> I honestly think it's the best one in its class. And I've tried just about all of them uh, at one point or another. I tried the Nikon 200, 500 when I was shooting Nikon. I tried the Sigma 150 to 600, the Tamron 150 to 600. Haven't tried the new ones yet that just came out for the E-mount. <clears throat> but, uh, and I also had the 100 to 400 uh, from Sony before the 200 to 600 came out. And I honestly, in my opinion, I think the 200 to 600 is the best in its class. It's the best bang for your buck, the internal zoom, the build quality, how fast it focuses, how sharp it is. Uh, I think it's a fantastic lens. Uh, so it's not about that. Uh, what this was about is I wanted, I wanted to see if by purchasing this, it takes me to another level. And you're going to hear me say that term a lot, another level, because that's really what this is all about, uh, the 600 F4. So, you know, I just wanted to get uh, those two things out of the way. <clears throat> so let's get started with the reasons why I feel that this was worth it for me. And like I said, you can make your own determination from there if, uh, if it's worth it for you. So the first one for me was um, being able to shoot in bad light and different light conditions that you normally wouldn't be able to shoot with in the 200 to 600. Um, and the perfect example for that is 
<clears throat> the second day I, uh, after I uh, bought this lens, uh, I got caught in a severe uh, thunderstorm and I pulled into this parking lot in this office building that's pretty close to a nature reserve. Um, and I was just sitting there waiting for it to, uh, to clear up, hopefully, because the weather said that it would clear up in an hour or so. And I looked in the, in the trees uh, in the parking lot, and there, and there was a black crowned night heron hanging out there. He looked miserable, just looking to get out of the rain, I guess. <clears throat> and uh, I was able to get some really nice shots of him, uh, even though it was so dark, so gloomy, and the light was horrible. And that's when I realized, you know, and, and you know, I, I knew that I would get an advantage in shooting in bad light with the F4 aperture, but that's when I really realized how much of a difference it can make. Because um, I really don't think I would have got those kind of shots with the 200 to 600 in that light. Um, so that was the first one for me. And I'm going to show you some examples of what I'm talking about, those pictures that I took of that black round night heron. So that was the first thing for me. So here's three pictures of what I was talking about with that black crown night heron. It was such a gloomy, dark thunderstorm. And I was still able to get some really nice pictures. Uh, this is the first of uh, the three I'm going to show you. Uh, I shot all of these at shutter speed 500, ISO 640, and uh, F4, obviously. I mean, this is what this is about. You can see in this picture, the rain is coming down. You, poor thing is looking really miserable. Then I started to move around because I saw some green trees in the background from uh, the parking lot. And I wanted to get that green background you're going to see in the next one. And this is my favorite one out of the bunch. Um, I think it really came out really nice. And uh, so you can see shooting an F4 can really give you an advantage in bad weather. I really don't think I could have got uh, really clean, nice images like this uh, shooting uh, with the 200 to 600. The second one for me is the level of clarity. Uh, I'm not talking sharpness. Uh, yes, this is plenty sharp and it's definitely sharper than the 200 to 600. But what I'm talking about is clarity and how clean the files are. There's just another level of clarity, and I'm saying another level again, um, that you see right away as soon as you look at the files, uh, they, it's a noticeable difference. Uh, it's just that. It's, you know, the clarity, how clean the files are. It's definitely sharper, obviously. Uh, but that's definitely the second thing that I noticed. And, you know, I expected that going in for the kind of money that you're spending on this lens. But I, honestly, it exceeded my expectation of the level of clarity uh, that I saw the difference uh, in, the two, uh, in the two lenses. So that's definitely the second reason for me. So the third reason for me why this is, uh, was worth it uh, is the autofocus. Uh, as good as the 200 to 600 is uh, with autofocus, uh, it's, it's really quick and, and you know, I think the autofocus is fantastic on it, especially when you pair it with the A9 or the uh, A1. I mean, it works amazing with those two cameras. Um, but this just takes you, you know, to another level of autofocus. And I mean, I keep using that term uh, honestly, I don't know what other term to use, uh, but, you know, it, it grabs autofocus so quick, uh, it's so accurate, and that's really the most important thing, how accurate it is, and it sticks to your target like glue. Uh, so, you know, that was definitely one of the reasons, uh, you know, for me that it made it worth it, is, you know, the autofocus is just incredible, especially when you pair it with the with the A1. I mean, it's just an unbelievable combination. And the fourth reason for me uh, why this is worth it is when you're shooting an F4, how it blurs out the background. It gives you that beautiful uh, bokeh and it completely blows out the, the background. Uh, sure, you can get that with the 200 to 600 at times, um, but it's so much easier to do shooting an F4 with this lens and it's just so effortless and even sometimes i found that even when you're close you have a background that's close to the subject you're shooting it still blurs it out which you would not definitely get that with the 200 to 600. so that was a, another huge thing for me is how you could blow out the background and get this beautiful smooth background and just completely blows it out 
Uh, so it, it's pretty amazing, actually. So here's three examples of what I'm talking about. The first one here of an osprey, you see how beautiful the background is blurred out. Really makes a subject pop. Such a cool effect. Same thing here with this turn. Beautifully blurred that background and the subject really pops off the picture. And the last one I'm going to show you, the background is really not that blurred, but the reason I included it is because the background was so close to this rabbit that I really didn't think I was going to get any blur effect at all. And it's still, I was pleasantly surprised to see that it's still blurred it out uh, somewhat. And uh, this definitely would have been a really busy background if I took this with the 200 to 600, how close the background is. So that's such a huge advantage. So this is the fifth and last thing for me of why I thought it was worth it. Uh, and I'm sure if I sat there, I could come up with a lot of other reasons, but these are the, the five main ones for me of why I thought it was worth getting this lens and spending that extra money. And that's something called full-time DMF on here. And what that is, is direct manual focus. If you, if you leave it on, on uh, manual focus is always engaged. So what that does for you is we've all had a bird that's, you know, in a tree and he's got a couple of branches in front of him and autofocus is just not grabbing him, keeps getting caught in the branches. Uh, so with the 200 to 600, for example, you would have to turn on that switch to engage the manual focus and then you can start manually focusing on him. Um, and, you know, uh, with this, you know, as, if you have it on full time, as soon as you start turning that uh, focus ring, it automatically starts uh, manually focusing. And those extra couple of seconds that you fiddle around with that switch can mean the difference between getting the shot or missing the shot. Because you know, we all know these birds are not gonna wait for you. They're not gonna say, oh, let me wait until he gets the shot. If they're gonna take off, they're gonna take off. So those extra couple of seconds can make all the difference in the world of getting that shot that you want. Uh, and that's why it's really important. So I have to say, there's been this fly here that's been annoying the hell out of me for the whole duration of me trying to shoot this video. It must have interrupted me at least a hundred times. Um, <laughs> no matter what I do, I can't get them to get away from me. And, it's, and it looks like it's the same fly. I don't know if I owe him money or I did something to his family. I have no idea. It's definitely the most annoying fly I've ever encountered in my life. Uh, I've had neighbors like that though before. Hope they're not watching. Oops. So before we get into the challenges that you might face using the 600 F4 over the 200 to 600, this is something that could be a positive or a negative depending on you. And for me, it was a positive, and that is how well balanced this lens is and how easy it is for me to handhold it. Um, so, you know, I, I honestly think that if you can handhold the 200 to 600 comfortably with no issues, you shouldn't have an issue hand holding this. Um, but if you're right at that point where you're, you know, you can hand hold the 200 to 600, but it's a struggle sometimes, then you're probably not gonna be able to hand hold this. And that's why I said it could be a positive or a negative. Um, you know, and the other thing is also that even though I said I can hand hold this with no problem, you definitely get a little more fatigued, uh, you, you know, faster uh, because of the extra weight and how bulky it is. Uh, but I don't mind, you know, it builds up a little muscle, but <laughs> it's definitely something that you should be aware of. Uh, but for me, I, this probably, you know, I, as well balanced as it can get for a 600 F4. Um, and it's, you know, it's such a pleasure to use and handhold for me. Now let's get into some of the challenges that you're going to face or could face uh, using the 600 F4 over the 200 to 600. And the first one for me is really obvious, and that's locating your subject. Um, it takes a lot of getting used to, uh, if you've never shot this type of lens before, uh, and it takes, and it's definitely a learning curve, and it takes a little while to get used to it, and that's locating your subject. You know, with, with the 200 to 600, you can, you know, if you're trying to locate your subject, you can easily zoom out, find your subject, zoom back in and start shooting. It's really easy. It's a, it's, it's a trick that works all the time. 
and it makes it really easy to find your target. You don't have that option with this. Um, so it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes to find your subject, uh, it, you know, to get it in frame. So just be aware of that. And it's a learning curve and, and it's still, even after you get used to it a little bit, it's still definitely more of a challenge finding uh, your subject because you're always stuck at 600 millimeters. Uh, so that's definitely the first challenge. So the second challenge kind of ties into the first thing that I mentioned, and that's that you're always stuck at 600 millimeters. Believe it or not, sometimes this is too much lens. Uh, and the perfect example for that is last year I was shooting uh, bald eagles, for example, and I was at my spot for a couple of hours. And, you know, I always say stay in one spot, stay quiet, blend in and let the wildlife come to you. And I got lucky after two hours of patience, this bald eagle came right in front of me and caught a fish really close. And I had to zoom out to 400 millimeters. Now, if I was using this lens, I probably wouldn't have got that shot or I would have cut off a big important part of it. Um, so, you know, just be aware of that, that sometimes, you know, uh, it could be a, a challenge because you're always stuck at 600 millimeters. It, it definitely teaches you uh, to start using your feet more, to move in and out, to get the shot that you want, where before you might get lazy and just zoom in and out. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just be aware of that. That's, you know, I've found it sometimes to be a challenge. Uh, uh, sometimes you miss a shot when something comes really close. So, you know, definitely uh, be aware of that. Uh, you don't have the option to zoom out ever when something gets really close to you. So you might miss that shot. So there are advantages to using a zoom lens. And that's why I'm keeping my 200 to 600 because I don't think that, you, you know, you can use this lens for every situation. So here's a few shots of the bald eagle that I was talking about that I shot with the 200 to 600. And I, I, I had to zoom out to 400 millimeters for all these shots here. So as you can see, if I was using the 600 prime, I would have cut off an important part of these shots or not gotten the shots at all. And that would have been pretty heartbreaking. So there is advantages to shooting a uh, zoom lens like the 200 to 600 over a 600 prime. because it does give you that flexibility. And that's why I said the 600 prime can't be your only lens. You're still gonna need a zoom lens to go with it, like the 200 to 600 or even the 100 to 400. So another challenge you're gonna face is, um, if you shoot the 200 to 600, you're already familiar that you get a lot of people that come up to you because they see you shooting a big lens and they'll start asking you questions and, you know, interrupt your flow or make you miss a shot or and scare away what you're trying to shoot. Um, so if you ever experience that, you're gonna experience uh, the same thing 10 times over when you shoot in this lens, just because of the sheer size of it, it's like a magnet to people coming up to you uh, to find out what, what it is. It's actually people that don't even realize that it's a lens. They just see you holding this big, huge thing. And I've had like this question uh, a few times, which made me chuckle. Uh, you know, what is that? <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I try to be as courteous as possible, you know, and try to explain to them that I'm trying to, you know, shoot wildlife. Um, but you're going to find that, you know, it can sometimes get really frustrating that you got a lot of people that come up to you and interrupt you and scare away what you're trying to shoot just because they see you shooting this and they'll, they'll even come from really far away just to come up and talk to you and ask you questions. So just be aware of that it can get frustrating sometimes, but, uh, you know, it's part of doing this. So another challenge for me, uh, and it's something that I do sometimes. If I'm driving in an area where there's a lot of stuff that's popping in and out, um, you know, I keep my camera and my 200 to 600 on the passenger seat. It's not the brightest thing to do, honestly. There's a lot of bad things that can happen from that. So I'm not recommending that you do it. It's just something that I do because it makes it really quick for me to grab my camera and get that shot if I see something. And that's really hard to do with this lens. Uh, <laughs> it's just so bulky uh, that I've banged it around on my mirror and all kinds of stuff when I'm trying to grab it to shoot something. Uh, so that definitely makes it a challenge. It's not as easy, you know, to do something like that with it because of the sheer size of it. Um, 
So just be uh, definitely aware of that. Another challenge you're gonna have with this, uh, and that's, when I got home, I was like, I took it out of the, the box and it comes in this beautiful hard shell case that fits just the lens with the hood reversed. So you can't really use it to carry this around. And that was, what the hell am I gonna carry this in? I don't have anything that fits this. <laughs> and most likely you won't either. Uh, so I found a couple of options that you can uh, use. Uh, one of them was a bag by a company called Rugged and it fits the 600 F4 with your camera attached. You can even put the grip on if you, if you want to, but you're gonna have to reverse the, uh, the hood. You can't keep the hood attached as is. And that can sometimes be a pain because with this hood, you have to unscrew it off uh, and screw it back on. Um, so if you're trying to hurry because you saw something that, you know, it could be a kind of a pain sometimes uh, and slow you down. Uh, but it is a nice option because it's a really well built bag and it's pretty inexpensive. I mean, I believe uh, it's like 130 bucks or 140 bucks. Sometimes I've seen it on sale for 120. Uh, and it's really, you know, uh, it's got a, you know, it's really nicely made. So uh, it's a really nice bag uh, and you have some compartments to put batteries and stuff like that. Uh, so I did pick that up. And another option I picked up uh, for days that I want to keep this whole thing intact as is, and I can just pull it out when I want. It's a lot bulkier, but it's built like a tank. And uh, it's, it's made by Pelican, it's called Pelican Air. Um, and you can basically customize it to fit exactly the inside of it. You can uh, customize it to fit exactly what you're putting in it. Um, it's a lot heavier, it's a lot bulkier, and it's a pain in the neck to, you know, <laughs> to, to bring with you. Uh, but once you get it inside the car, it makes it so much easier to be able to keep everything intact with the hood on, uh, and being able to take it out. And that thing, like I said, you could probably uh, toss that thing around and, you, and your gear would be perfectly safe. I mean, that's what it's made for, honestly. Um, it can even float. Uh, hopefully you'll never need that. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's definitely another option. So I went with those two options and I'll show you some pictures of them. Uh, I'll put some links to them if you're interested in them. Um, not affiliated with them in any way. So another challenge you're gonna have, obviously, is the cost of this. Um, with the 200 to 600, yes, it's two grand. If something happens to it, you know, it's gonna really suck and you're gonna be really upset about it. But if something happens to this, if you drop it, if it gets stolen, anything like that, it's gonna be crushing. <laughs> it's something that's definitely gonna make you lose sleep uh, for a while. Um, so to get peace of mind, uh, you know, one thing you want to look into first is your homeowner's insurance might cover that, and mine does, but I still wanted another level of peace of mind and not to have to worry about it. So I did get uh, insurance through PPA. I believe it stands for uh, Professional Photographers of America. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And you can buy a yearly membership, and that covers you right off the bat for up to 15000 but then you can buy additional coverage, you know, depending on how much gear you have. Uh, you know, I ended up getting a higher uh, level of coverage. And of course, as you go up in the dollar amount, it, it gets more expensive per year. Uh, but it's, if you really look at the cost of it, it's, you know, I, I got everything covered now. My A1, my, uh, my 600 F4, all my other gear my vlogging cameras, uh, my other lenses, my 200 to 600, everything is covered up to that dollar amount. And you put in your serial numbers for the stuff that you have serial numbers for. Uh, so that gives me a little bit of peace of mind. I'm not sponsored by PPA or anything like that. It's just, I'm just telling you what I did just to have peace of mind. And now I don't have to worry about if this thing gets stolen, if this thing, if I drop this thing by accident, cause like I said, I like to handhold this all the time. So, you know, it's definitely it gives you peace of mind and I really highly recommend that you do that. Definitely insure your gear when, if you're gonna buy something this expensive. One thing I didn't mention before, if you've noticed it and we're wondering, uh, this is the lens cover that you get with this lens. It's really beautiful leather, really soft. It really uh, covers your lens really well. It uh, goes on with Velcro right here. 
So if you're wondering, you get this with the lens. Uh, it's really nice and the standard, um, you know, dust cover that you usually get, uh, or lens cover. Uh, it's definitely a nice touch. If you're wondering uh, what I have on my camera here, uh, the skin, it's made by a company called Alpha Guard. I'm not sponsored by them. I, I don't have to keep saying that, but uh, a lot of people have been asking me, and I've, I've put links, because I had it on my 200 to 600 before, and I decided to get it for this. I'm gonna warn you right off the bat though, it takes a lot of patience to put on and it's a pain in the neck and you're probably gonna end up saying a lot of bad words and throwing a lot of stuff around. But once you get it on, it looks beautiful. Uh, so, and it protects all your, you know, it protects your gear from scratches. Um, and if you ever decide one day to take it off, it comes off so it's not permanent. But it does stay on there when you're using it. It doesn't peel off or anything like that. Um, so. You know, that's, uh, if you're wondering what it is, that's what it is. So now let's get to the good stuff, which is the pictures and videos that I took with the 600 F4. I'm sure that's what a lot of you are waiting for. Um, I hope you're enjoying this video. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. It really helps me out. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I don't get paid to make these videos. I'm not sponsored by anyone. So that's your way of helping me out. And I really appreciate it. Appreciate all the support. And also be on the lookout for this video of this great blue heron that's devours these gigantic frogs. I got tons of pictures and video. These frogs are so gigantic. It's the biggest ones I've ever seen. They look like they were, you know, next to a nuclear plant somewhere. <laughs> uh, so be on the lookout for that. It should be out really soon. And it's all taken with the 600 F4 and the Sony A1. Uh, so I'm not gonna have those in this video, but uh, this, that video will be upcoming really soon. So be on the lookout for that. And all right, guys, let's get started. Let's go.
The one thing that drives me nuts is, uh, and it's not just Sony, it's a lot of manufacturers, is why in a lens like this, when they put an Arca Swiss foot instead of a regular foot, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I mean, how much can that add to the cost on a lens like this? Uh, it's such an inconvenience to have to use an adapter or uh, replace the foot to be able to use it on a tripod. I mean, for me, it's not a huge deal because I don't use tripods. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm always hand-holding. I, I rarely use it. But on the rare occasion that I do use a tripod, it, it would just be such an inconvenience to have to put an adapter on here or, or change the foot out to have it permanently like that. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I think it's really stupid and, and it's short-sighted uh, by a lot of these manufacturers. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me. I'd love to know. Now let's get to what this whole video was about, honestly, and that's who should buy this lens. Uh, you know, I can only give you uh, the information of why it was worth it for me. Ultimately, you're going to have to make that decision. So my answer is going to be very similar to what I said about the A1 to recommend if you should buy it or not. And that's it really depends on what you do and what your budget is. Um, if you're a pro wildlife shooter or pro sports shooter you have to have this lens honestly in my opinion uh it's a must it was way overdue for me but you know i think it's something that you have to have in your arsenal and it can't be your only lens either you're going to still need something like the 200 to 600 or the 100 uh, the 400 to go along with this in my opinion um so that's definitely a must if you're if you do those things professionally um now, also, if you're an enthusiast and you take your, photog your wildlife photography really serious or your sports photography really serious um, and you have the budget, that's key word, you have the budget, then absolutely pick up this lens. It's definitely going to take you to another level. It's, it's an incredible lens. It really, um, you know, gives you incredible results, an incredible autofocus, uh, a, a level of clarity that you can't achieve with the 200 to 600 um you know that's not saying anything bad about the 200 to 600 the 200 to 600 is fantastic and if you know what you're doing with it you can get some unbelievable results but this is just another you know it, it's another level of that i mean and you should expect that spending eleven thousand dollars more you, there is something you're getting for that obviously um now if it's worth it to you that's that's what you have to determine if that kind of money is worth the the you know the the little bit of extra performance that you're going to get um and you know some of it is huge some of it is little to be honest um but it was definitely worth it for me for all those things that i mentioned in the beginning of the video um now if you're the type of guy that goes out on the weekend likes to take some wildlife photos maybe shoots a couple of high school sports games or shoot you know uh shoots your kids soccer game for example and you know we'll post some pictures once in a while on Instagram you know then then I, I really don't think that that you need to go out and spend this kind of money on this lens get the 200 to 600 or the 100 to 400 and you're going to get some fantastic results with both those lenses they're they're really awesome uh, and if you know what you're doing you learn how to use them properly you can get some amazing results so you know don't feel that you have to get this uh, if, if that's what you do. So anyway, that's my take on it. Uh, you don't have to agree with it. It's just my opinion, and that's what it is. It's an opinion, obviously. I'm just trying to help you make a decision. I know I was on the fence for, for a while of spending all that cash on this thing. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. It's a lot of money, guys. So I hope I helped you with your decision on getting the 600 F4, uh, you know, I can't make that decision for you, obviously. It's a tough decision, but I hope some of the information that I gave you may help you in that decision. I mean, that was the whole purpose of me making this video, so I hope it helped. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. I really appreciate it. It really helps me out. Uh, like I mentioned before, I, I'm not being paid or sponsored uh, to make these videos, so I really appreciate the, the help. I hate to keep harping on it. Uh, but also, be on the lookout, like I said before, for that great blue heron video, Devouring the Frogs. That should be out really soon. All shot with the 600 F4. Um, and until next time, guys, happy shooting and see you later.